Next, we're going to talk about uploading data. We're going to show you how to upload your assets to Cloudinary's Cloud. For this exercise, we're going to use the upload.java module. And I'm going to show you later on where to comment and which line to comment to perform the same actions as I do. So the upload performs an authenticated API call to the, through the cloud neural service. As I said, there are two ways to do it, but here we're going to show the API because the SDK is what we are talking about. So let's go over this line. How do we upload? Firstly, we call our cloud neural object, the one we created with our cloud neural URL. We then call the uploader module and we call a function called upload. We then give it a path to our asset. In this case, I have a folder on my project that's called assets. And inside it, I have an asset called cheesecake.jpg. We then give it an empty options map. This is something that we're going to mention later on, and we're going to show you different options we can send to the server in order to get different results. Once the upload is finished, the URL is immediately ready to be delivered, and the URL would look something like this. The upload part represents the type of delivery we made. In this case, we made upload. Once we finish uploading, we get a response back from the server. The response would look something like this. There are many, many variables here, but the ones we actually care for now is the secure URL, which is the URL for the asset we just uploaded. There's also the URL part, which is the non-secure one with the HTTP. You can see different things like tags, but we will talk about those later on. You can see the image width, how much it weights, the height, placeholder, and all other different things. As I said before, there's an alternate path. We can also upload using our upload widget. We're going to show an example of that later on in the course. You can browse or just drag and drop asset to this widget, and they will be uploaded to your cloud as well. So before we show the, the deliver type, and now we're going to talk about resource type. Cloudless supports multiple resource types, from images to videos, but not only those. We can have basically any type of file that you like. In the examples below, we show how to upload a video or let Cloudinary detect automatically for you what is the resource type, or you can give it a row. And here, we're actually uploading a font file. The resource type will show before the delivery type on the URF. Let's go to the code. Okay, so as I said before, we first need to uncomment the module that we're going to use. In this section, we're using the upload module. We then go to the upload module itself, and we need to comment, and comment, sorry, the first thing that we're going to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload the cheesecake.jpg asset into my cloud. Let's start by that. I'm going to run my code. As I said, you can either click the green arrow, or if you're using Mac, you can click the control R as I do. You can see the print of my cloud name as we did before, and I get the response. In the response, I can see all the different variables that we just talked about. We can see that this has a public ID, which is something that we're going to talk about in a bit. But let's click this, the secure URL and see what is the result that we got. We got the cheesecake, as we expected. Let's try uploading a video. So here, I'm uploading a video from my local assets folder called earth.mp4. And I'm giving it a resource type of video. Let's run this example and see what happens. There we go. We got the result of uploading our video. And let's click the secure URL again to see the result that we got. As expected, we got a video of 30 seconds of Earth moving around. Next, we're going to upload the same Earth to the MP4 video, but we're going to give it a resource type auto to see that Cloudinary can detect for you what is the resource type for this asset. We're going to run the code again. And we got the response. Now we're going to click the secure URL again, just to see, but we can see that Cloudinary gave us a resource type of a video. Even though we supplied it with auto, it automatically detects for us the resource type. Click the URL, we get the same video again, 30 seconds of Earth 30. Next, we're going to upload the raw file. As we showed in the example in the presentation, we are uploading a font and we give it a resource type raw. Let's run this code. And we see we got the response. 
we have the original file name, which is this, and we have the same here, dot .ppf. And we have it on our cloud. Let's just see it on our cloud. I'm going to refresh my cloud so we can see all the assets that I just uploaded. And we can see that we have the cheesecake. We have both two times because once we uploaded it with resource type video, once we uploaded it with resource type auto, and we have our font file, we just uploaded using raw resource type. Public ID is a unique identifier for each asset you upload to Cloudinary's Cloud. It's used to reference uploaded resources and when using transformation to know which asset this transformation are being used on. It's part of the URL, you can see it at the end. So in this example, we can see that kitten is the public ID. If you don't supply a public ID explicitly, Cloudinary will create random one for you. And it would look something like this. As we've seen on my cloud, which I showed you before, Earth the Cheesecake got random IDs because I didn't give them myself. Next, I'm going to show you how to give your names to the assets that you upload. So naming options. We have different ways to name our assets that we're uploading, and we're going to see examples of how to use them. So firstly, we are uploading our assets, as we said before, using the cloud memory object. We use the uploader module, and then we call the upload function. We then give the path to our asset, and here we are using the options method. We're giving it two values. One is use file name. The other is unique file. Use file name means that cheesecake will be taken and being put as the public ID for this asset by cloud. Unique file name means that Cloudinary will add random suffix, unique suffix to this asset for you. So you don't override if you have multiple assets with the name cheesecake, we don't want you to override them. So we give you the ability to give them a unique suffix for each of them. Of course, you can upload without using the unique file name, and then the cheesecake will be the only public ID. And lastly, you can supply any kind of public ID that you want by going into the option path, giving it the key of a public ID, and giving it any name you like. So once we upload this, cheesecake will get the public ID of Yarn. Let's go to the code. So first example I want to show is how we upload with a public ID that we give. So I'm uploading from my assets folder a dog.jpg, and I'm giving it the public ID called dog. Let's run this, and then we'll see what happens. We got the response. As before, we got the secure URL, so let's click it and see what asset that we got. Yep, we got a dog. We can see that the original file name was dog, but also the public ID because we specified it in the options map. Now let's try and give a video a public ID and the resource type. As we said, the options map can receive multiple values separated by commas. So we give it a resource type of a video. We give it a public ID called Earth. Let's run this and see what happens. We got our response. And let's take a look at the fields that we have here. We have a resource type of a video because this is something that we supplied and let's search quickly for the public. And we have a public ID as we supplied next. We're going to show with file name, but without the unique file name, which means that we will get exactly the name of the file name we are uploading. In this case, cheesecake. Let's run this code. And as you can see in the public ID, we get cheesecake folder. So as I said before, we want to give you a way to organize and categorize your assets. A folders is a good way to do it, and folders are easily easily being created and used in Cloudinary's platform. So how can we do that? A folder can be part of the public ID that you give. They are being separated by the slash character, and that means that we're creating folder. So if we if we'll take a look at the example here, we can see that we are uploading again from the assets cheesecake.jpg, and we give it a public ID. But this time, the public ID is being created by tree separated by slash screens, which means that it will be in a folder called food, subfolder my favorite, and there we will have the cheesecake. Or we can give immediately a folder. As we can see in the options map here, we give the key folder and we tell this asset dog we want it to be in paths, my favorite. In the URL, the folder will be shown as funnels. So here, for example, kitten is being held in the folder called cute animals. 
there's a cool tip here that we want to say. You don't have to pre-create the folders. They will be created for you once you give them inside the public IP. Let's see some code examples. So first, we're going to upload an image to a folder by supplying the folders in the public ID. Then we're going to go to the cloud and see our folders being created. So let's run this piece of code. We can see that now we have a folder in our response and it says food slash my favorite. Let's go to the cloud and see what we just created. I will refresh my cloud so we get all the updates. And we can see that there is a folder here called food, which you just created. If you go inside, there's another subfolder called my favorite. If you go to that, I bet that you can expect you'll find cheesecake asset right here. Back to the code. Next, we're going to upload an image with the folder key in the options map. And we're going to upload the dog assets into a folder called packs subfolder my favorite. Let's run this code and get, then go to our cloudinary .i and see what we got there. So firstly, I want you to look here on the folder. We got pen slash my favorite. Let's go to our cloud. Let me refresh so we get all the results and we see that I have here a patch folder. Inside it, I have a subfolder called my favorite. And inside I have my dog ass. You can see that it got a random public ID because it didn't give it any public ID and Cloudinary created that unique public ID for me. Upload source options. So before we showed you how to upload assets from local files that we have stored on our machine, that are not the only way you can upload files. Downloader give you many different options. For example, you can upload from an HTTP link or HTTPS. As you can see here, again, we're calling our cloud menu object. We're calling our uploader model. We call the upload function. We give it a URL instead of the asset path that we gave before. And we give it an empty option. You can also give an S3 bucket. You can give a base64 data URI, or you can give an FTP URL. Let's see an example. So what we're going to do is we're going to upload this chic.jpg. This image is being held on the cloud and training GitHub. And we're going to upload it straight from the URL to our cloud. Let's run this code. Okay, we got a result. First, let's check if the URL is what we were hoping for. We can see a cheek image. That's great. Let's go to our cloud. Let's refresh it so we can get all the updates. And we can see that now we have the cheek image on our cloud. 